Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch, our show following all the news and rumors on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. I'm Damon Hadfield, and joining me, as always, is Ryan McCaffrey, host of iGen's Xbox Podcast, Podcast Unlocked. Happy holidays, Damon. It's our last show of the year. Last show of the year. Happy holidays to you and everyone out there. And we are joined by a very special guest this week, Jeff Ferris, technical director over at Epic Games. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Thanks so much. I'm excited to be here. And we're here to talk about The Matrix Awakens, an Unreal Engine 5 experience, a surprise announced from the Game Awards last week, a surprise launch uh, that same evening. Everyone can check it out. It's really a showcase for what Unreal Engine 5 can do. Ryan, you actually uh, you, you got to check this out early, I think. Is that right? Yeah, I got a little early sneak peek. I uh, got to speak actually with Jeff a little before the Game Awards. And uh, yeah, I had to keep my mouth shut because this <laughs> this is really impressive. I mean. You know, I actually thought, oh, well, the game part kicks in later. But no, the whole thing, Jeff, is is Unreal Engine 5, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Front to back. Absolutely. I mean, that's why we yeah. kind of that, that's the goal of this is to to showcase and, and push the development of the engine. And I guess I'll start and uh, then I'll pass back to Damon. I, I just want to know, how did this come about? Because obviously you've got kind of a cross promotional situation here. I mean, Epic is no stranger to large scale big name collaborations and crossovers, but uh, who came to who here? You know, where did this come from? So on the special projects team at Epic, we, we do a lot of these big collaborations and, um, you know, dog food projects and, and technical explorations. And, um, you know, we were in the market, like we finished up the Lumen in the Land of Nanite demo a couple of years ago. And um, around that time, you know, we're, we're looking for our next project. And uh, Kim LeBrary, our CTO, is friends with uh, Lana Wachowski and had heard mm -hmm. that they were working on uh, the next Matrix movie. So I think it just kind of clicked at that point, like, you know, they're good friends and they both have, you know, really forward thinking visions of future technology. And it was, I think it was just the moment of, hey, we need to do something together. And, you know, when it kind of came down to me, you know, it was like, do you want to work on a, a Matrix demo? I was like, yes, absolutely. Like there was no there was no hesitancy on that at all. I mean, it lines up so well with kind of the things we're pushing for and like this, this metaverse future that, that everyone's talking about and building towards. Um, yeah, it was a no brainer. So does, does Lana Wachowski get shown the, the demo from, uh, from what last year, like as sort of a, Hey, here's what we can do with, with our engine, with the matrix. Yeah. Yeah. I think she had seen, you know, what we were doing and, um, and, and she was all in like, she, you know, she, she did all the writing for what you see in the matrix awakens john gata was a big part of this from the creative side um and he was involved in the original films as well um you know so we had tons of support from warner brothers tons of support from the film creators uh, it was a great collaboration so the matrix awakens it starts with a, an intro from keanu reeves and carrie ann moss then there's an interactive car chase sequence and then you're sort of set free to explore the city to walk or fly around as you wish how long did the whole thing take to build so we started it um right almost exactly as the COVID lockdowns hit. So, so this entire demo was built work from home, which I think is in hindsight was pretty amazing and pretty crazy. You know, we started out with a real small team and it kind of grew as we, we you know, developed the scope and fleshed out what we wanted to do. So it, it was really about a, about a year and a half overall. Now, obviously you're hoping to get developers to sign up to use Unreal Engine 5 when they see this, which I suspect will probably be successful. In fact, actually, I'm gonna pause right there. Have have developers reached out to you in the last week since this came out? We were in contact with lots of developers beforehand, you know, giving some some sneak peeks of what we've got going yeah. on. We've got really good relationships with a lot of other companies. Um, so it wasn't a, a big secret, the rough strokes of what we were working on. But uh, yeah, we've had a lot, of, a lot of good conversations coming out of this out of this demo. So what? But then, how about internally? Like, what what is sort of the the benefit? What is what is what does the internal Epic team get out of doing this? So there are tons of benefits. Um, uh, we've done this in other projects in the past also. Um, but I mean, just building technology in a vacuum is is rarely um, efficient. Like you need, you need a context, you need a customer. Uh, and that's where we come in. A lot of times there's various points that you can inject you know, a product team, um, like with Lumen in the land of Nanite, it was really early in the, the process of developing Lumen and developing Nanite. Um, but having, you know, artists and content creators building stuff, like co-developing with the people who are working on the feature is extremely valuable. And then once, you know, once we've shipped that demo and we're like, okay, we're going to take these new features and we're going to push them, you know, to ship, right? We got to get these ready. We got to get these in consumers' hands and we're going to you know, these are going to be in, in UE5 when it ships. Um, so we need to we need to make sure it's battle tested. We need to go go all the way with it and put it in consumers' hands. So that's really the next step is, you know, along the way, we're, we're 
we're, we're pushing and we're setting really ambitious goals and trying to, um, you know, come up with new uses and, and just use these technologies like, like any old customer would have, or like any old customer would. And then you get this iteration loop of, with the technology. So you end up with really awesome content and really awesome battle tested technology. So you're collaborating with filmmakers here, which you've done mm-hmm. in the past on The Mandalorian. Is mm-hmm. it a goal of yours to get more filmmakers to use Unreal Engine 5 as well as developers? Absolutely. I mean, I think the future of real time is, is, is limitless. And I think there's this convergence of, of a lot of the technologies that that happen uh, or that people are using in, you know, linear media and, you know, movies and TV um, are just naturally going to converge with real time. And there's just tons of workflow benefits there. One thing Kim had told me was on the original, um, like those kind of, sh- you know, one shots of Kia, or I'm sorry, Kia, Neo, um, those would have taken 10 hours per frame to render on the original wow. Matrix 20 years ago. Uh, you know, now we're rendering them in 33 milliseconds. So, like that's... Um, like the workflow advantages of that in terms of iteration and, and, you know, really making an awesome product are, are immense. So I, I think, I think it's just a natural, natural evolution of the technology. So Jeff, what, like what next gen challenges does Unreal Engine 5 attempt to solve? And, and how many of those challenges do you think that this demo suggests answers to? Like, I'm kind of curious how you look at it from that perspective. So I think a, a big thing with a lot of these, like, like the next gen, I think it's going to be a lot about scale. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you, you think back to the Gears of War days, you know, we were looking for pushing for fidelity, but everything was a little bit small, you know, a few number of enemies on screen, that kind of thing. And one thing we embraced really early was this idea of scale, um, you know, both in the density of the the environment and the fidelity that you're that you're seeing, like with the with the buildings and, you know, how close you can get it and see, see super high fidelity, like Nanite solves that problem. Um, but also with like, you have to fill this world, right? You have to, um, uh, you know, put tons of cars and you, you want to push the density there. So we wrote a new AI system there called Mass AI, which is highly scalable and supports, you know, 35,000 pedestrians and, and 18,000 wow. 18, cars simulating all at the same time. Um, we, we leaned a lot into proceduralism so we can build the city. Like, you know, we didn't have a massive team. Um, so we, we developed some pipelines to get in and out of Houtini. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll go a little bit deeper next in the early part of next year about how we built this. But, um, you know, we had a great pipeline where, you know, you could define, you know, I want tall buildings here and short buildings here. And I want the main roads here and the highway here. And you just had to let it go. And then boom, you have a city. Um, and uh, and we were we were getting really rapid iteration on that. I think the last city generation we did was about a week before content lock. So we were pushing it right up to the end, you know, re-exporting the whole city. So you could you can kind of offer developers uh, a large scale and and short iteration time. It sounds like exactly. I mean, it's all about you know putting the most powerful tools in the hands of creators, and um, and I think we showed and and this is kind of what we set out to show when we approached it with a small team was. You, know, you don't need an army of um, an army of artists and an army of technologists to, to put something like this together. Uh, I think that really helps democratize, you know, content creation going forward. If if these sorts of experiences are not unreachable or barely reachable by only the biggest and most specialized teams. How big was the team that put this together? Um, the core special projects team is in the 50, 70 zone. Um, it always kind of depends. Um, I think the the final Slack channel grew to about 200 or so, but that was pretty much anybody who ever touched the project. So hmm. depends on how you would count it, but it's, I mean, smaller than a typical AAA game team by far, I think. You mentioned Gears of War. Gears of War dev, the coalition, uh, helped mm-hmm. out with The Matrix Awakens. How did they contribute? So we, um, you know, coming into the summer, we're, you know, going through the... Um, you know, the shipping process and, and, and trying to, trying to get all this into the boxes. And we were looking at the, at the series S and, and that was a bit of a challenge. Um, you know, but we absolutely wanted to make this work. It was super important to us to be, um, to have parity across all the, all the hardware that's out there. So, um, the coalition jumped in, they, uh, they were super great. Like they have a lot of expertise on the box. Um, you know, they have a lot of expertise in unreal and, uh, and it was just, you know, a whole bunch more, you know, super awesome hands to, to help us go deep and, 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 you know, find out where we could optimize and find out where we can get back some, some memory and performance and, and, uh, and really just augmented the team. And Jeff, how, how much more do you think is, you know, we're still early in the console generation and we as gamers here, I mean, we see on the screens as the generation goes on, developers tend to wring more power out of the consoles, uh, and, and gain, we get better looking games. So, how much more do you think is left in these consoles? You know, you, you, like you said, you started this 
three, four months after the consoles came out and, and the tools have continued to develop. So, you know, if you guys did this exact same demo again in and re started it from scratch in three years from now, how much better do you think it would look? Oh, I think the, the road ahead is, is super bright. And I, I think um, like this is, I mean, we weren't even on the shipping version of UE5, right? Like we were, we were laying down the tracks, you know, while the train was barreling down it on, on this project. Um, so a couple years down the road, when the technology has had a chance to mature, I think these boxes are going to be amazing. I'm super excited about what's going to come out. Uh, are there any Easter eggs hiding in this that, that nobody, you know, you haven't seen any Reddit threads about or anything yet that, I sh that we should be looking for? Uh, there's a couple of minor things, but a lot of it's a lot of it's inside baseball, just little things to make us laugh, right? Um, uh, the uh, I mean, the, the night mode is is sort of a a well surfaced Easter egg. Um, it's on the map on the map, so it's mm -hmm. not that well hidden. But uh, yeah, there may be a couple little things around, but I, I don't think it's uh, uh, there's some llamas and, and things like that. <laughs> there's a there's a stenciled corgi that's one of our artists' uh, corgis right there by the start. I always get a chuckle. Like <laughs> We're almost out of time, Ryan. I think we probably have time for one more question if you have one. Yeah. Uh, when I talked to you last week, Jeff, you were mentioning, uh, and I think you kind of alluded to it just earlier in this interview, that you're, uh, you guys are going to be giving this whole thing away to developers, but just minus the IP matrix, the matrix IP bits that you don't own. What, so what, can you kind of talk more about that? Yeah. Like in the early part of next year, we want to, I mean, we've got to take out the stuff we can't distribute, obviously, but but, um, you know, we want to we just want to release all this, you know, as as a, uh, an asset resource, as a learning resource for the community, um, just to kind of show you what we did, you know, how, how we built it. You, you can take the assets and build your own city. You can build on top of the city we, we made here, you know, put some gameplay in it, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, you know, I think putting this in the hands of the community is going to unlock a ton of creativity. I think it's just going to help. You know, level up the next generation of developers, and um, and it's exciting. It's a little scary too, right? To to let them peek under the covers and see what what nonsense we did. But uh, hopefully, we we'll clean it up first. Well, the Matrix Awakens and Unreal Engine Five demo is available now on both PlayStation Five, Xbox Series X. It's free to download and check out. I recommend you do. It's very impressive, and it's definitely very exciting to imagine playing a, a full game uh, that looks like that and and has that sense of scale to it. So, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today, and happy holidays. Yeah, thanks so much. Happy holidays to both of you. Before we go, I have the results of last week's poll, which asked, what was your favorite next-gen game at the Game Awards? And coming in first place with just over 32% of the vote, unsurprisingly, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Unsurprisingly, considering the popularity of the license and the pedigree of the developer, that was followed by Alan Wake 2, Hellblade 2, and then Forspoken, the PS5 exclusive, came in last place with just under 14% of the vote. Before we go, we've got a poll for you to vote on for next episode, which will be airing next year, early 2022. We want to know what Unreal Engine 5 game are you most excited for? Is it Stalker 2, Hellblade 2, Redfall? Make sure to vote at IGN.com and we will share the results with you next episode. And that's going to do it for Next Gen Console Watch, another year of Next Gen Console Watch. Ryan, that's two years down for the show. Two years keep it going. for a show that was only supposed to last one year. So yeah. we must be doing something right. We're doing something right. The people just, they kept watching. The consoles came out and we you kept watching. It. We very much appreciate it. We're, yeah. We'll keep, we'll keep making the show for you uh, as long as you keep watching. So that's us. Uh, that's a year wrapped for Next Gen Console Watch. Thank you to Ryan. Thank you to our guest, Jeff. Uh, and thank you to Marian working behind the scenes, making this episode possible. My name is Damon. We will see everybody next year. Happy holidays.